Hey everybody, welcome to another video. You're going to want to grab some snacks and buckle up because this one's a doozy. <laughs> In addition to the obvious paint issues here, we've also got a fairly significant cigarette smell. Those are never easy to get out, but I'm going to show you how I tackle it here. Hold on to your hats, let's get into it. My name is Angie and I'm the one behind Transcend Furniture Gallery, a business created from the love of vintage furniture and the desire to take broken, dated and unloved things and turn them into modern treasures. Sometimes I paint and sometimes I don't, but I always do what I can to save old pieces from the trash. Welcome to my workroom. This piece was a free marketplace find and I would not have paid five cents for it, so I'm glad it was free. You can see there's several layers of paint. They have paint everywhere on this piece. I have my work cut out for me. Not only is it painted everywhere, it's filthy. So we need to do a really good cleaning here. It was clearly in a smoker's house, so the smell of cigarettes is quite strong. While that doesn't always mean a piece is doomed, I will caution you, often it is, but I'm going to do what I can to save this piece and see if we can get that smell out. After a really good vacuuming to get a lot of the dust and cobwebs out, I'm going to flip this over and start cleaning the entire piece with this little scrub pad and some bleach cleaner. I'm literally going to be spraying and scrubbing every inch of this piece, top to bottom, inside and out. Every surface of the drawers, even the bottoms. I need to get as much of the surface nicotine off as possible before I do any sanding. This might seem like overkill where I'm going to be sanding anyway, but trust me, this stuff usually is pretty thick and in order to get a good result, I have to be really diligent here. All of the little plastic guides were broken, so I'm going to pull those off. And this drawer, I don't know what the heck <laughs> was going on here. They kind of fashioned this wooden runner. I don't know why. The little plastic pieces are like $2. <laughs> it seems like a lot of work when they could have just replaced the plastic piece. Finishing up the scrubbing on the inside here and then I'm going to flip this up and leave it in the sun with the drawers to completely dry out. One note about the backboard piece here, sometimes when you have pieces with a strong smoke smell, the backs often have to be replaced. I'm going to see if that's the case here. For now, we're just going to keep moving as if it's going to be fine. <laughs> I'm using my favorite Circa 1850 stripper here. It's going to make quick work of this paint. I am working in a very well ventilated place. My garage door is wide open just a few feet away from me. So something to keep in mind if you're going to try this. You're either going to need a respirator or lots of airflow or both, preferably. I've left this on for about 20 minutes and I'm going to start scraping here. I have no idea what is under this paint in terms of the wood and the condition of the wood. This has obviously been painted a few times and it's interesting when you're doing this scraping off multiple layers, you can really tell what kind of paint each layer is. For example, this white outer layer is very clearly some sort of latex, probably like a house paint. It always comes off in these big stretchy, I don't know, <laughs> like look at that. <laughs> this first layer, this sort of hunter green color is a lot harder and thicker. So I needed to move to my paint scraper to get the rest of it off. I could have added another coat of stripper, but to be honest, the paint scraper is just as fast and a little bit less messy. Zipping through these drawers, once I have all the paint off the front, or at least as much as I can get off initially, I'm going to grab my orbital sander here, Mr. Dewalt, <laughs> as you all know kind of a running joke here that he actually has a face and you'll see it. Once you see the sander face, you'll never unsee it. The edges of these were already rounded, so I'm just kind of sanding along with the shape and then I'm going to be sanding off as much as I possibly can of the surface of these. 
They've already been cleaned, but I want to take off a layer and hopefully some of the residual smoke smell will come with it. We're going to seal these after. I'll show you how I do that. But the first stages of prep for dealing with a nicotine issue is cleaning, cleaning, cleaning and trying to get off the first layer. Ah, there's my happy little sander face. <laughs> The flat areas of these drawer fronts are obviously quite easy to sand, uh, as well as the edges you just sort of round over. The middle section is going to be what gives me the most problems, I already know this, so I have a couple tools to help me with that. All four drawers, as well as the top, also have these areas where it looked like there was probably holes or dings before they initially painted the piece, so that first layer of hunter green paint is in all of these holes, so I'm just using this pick to pick out as much as I can, and then I will fill them afterwards. I wouldn't have to go through all of this extra trouble if I was going to paint the drawers, but I've already decided I want to stain them, so I have to try to get as much of this paint off as possible. I knew this area would be a little bit trickier to get everything off, but seems to be coming off okay. There's a few spots I had to grab this little scour pad. It's actually made for removing stripper residue, so it's working quite well here to get some of the rest of this off. I'm starting off on the top here with a 100 grit sand pad. It's a little more aggressive than I usually do, but as you can see, there is a lot of damage here. I was thinking I was going to paint the top, but once I got down a few layers, I could see that the top was actually probably salvageable. There's some pretty deep gouges here and scrapes, but you can see on the drawers here, all the edges are rounded. So what I'm going to do to get rid of those is just basically copy that shape here on the top. I don't want to spend too long in one spot, so I'm moving fairly quickly here and I'll just go over it as I need to, but it does seem to be working. What's allowing me to do this is the fact that it's a solid wood top. If this was a veneer top, I couldn't dig into it like I'm doing here without risking exposing the substrate. But where this is a pretty thick piece of wood, I can dig out as much of the green as I can. I couldn't get it all out, but I did get a lot of it out. And then I'm just adding some natural colored wood filler here, and I'm just going to stain right over top of everything. I'm using a 150 grit pad here to finish prepping the sides. I am going to be painting the sides and the braces across the front. So I just want to make sure that it's nice and smooth. It doesn't have to be perfect. I don't have to get every single bit of paint off, but I do want to try to get it as smooth as possible. Mission accomplished. It's the same thing on these edges. I don't need to get every little bit out. I just want to make sure that the painting surface is nice and smooth so I don't have any weird lumps and bumps when I'm painting. There's some areas that the orbital sander can't reach, so I'm doing some hand sanding in those corners and edges just to tidy things up. I'm ready now for my final sanding. This is a 220 grit sanding pad and I'm just making sure to get these patched areas nice and smooth. I don't want to leave any build up there. And again, making sure these edges are nice and round and smooth without any sort of ripples. You could also use a router bit to do this. I don't have a router, so sanding it is. <laughs> I'm using one of my custom colors. There was a video not that long ago where I show you how to make this exact color. If you want to see that, I'll put a link to it just up above here and also in the description box below. Which reminds me, if there's any products that I'm using that you're interested in, make sure you check out the description boxes of every video because I do post a lot of links there where you can find these products and if I don't have a link, I'll at least put the name of it and where I purchased it and then you can maybe find it yourself. 
I also want to give a shout out to these two awesome folks who bought me my first coffees. Well, teas technically, because <laughs> I don't actually drink coffee. It's a fun and pretty inexpensive way to help support the channel and it totally made me smile. So thank you so much, guys. I'm just finishing up with my first coat of paint here and while that paint is drying I'm going to finish off the front of the drawers. Again this is a 220 grit for my final sanding which is typically the grit I choose if I'm going to be staining something. It's a pretty warm day here and that usually means my paint dries a little faster than normal so I'm knocking down any paint lines here with a quick 220 grit sanding and then applying my second coat. This will ensure a nice smooth finish. I opted to use General Finishes um, Gel Stain in Nutmeg. It's one of my absolute favorite stain colors. These hardwood tops are sometimes notorious for not accepting stain super well. So even though this stain looks like it's quite dark, it's actually going to be a little bit lighter, which is what I'm going for. I wanted kind of a natural finish, maybe just a little bit darker, if that makes sense. So I thought this would be a good way to achieve that. As always, you want to wipe it off before it has a chance to dry. Gel stain usually doesn't have to sit on the surface as long as a penetrating stain. Ooh, legs for days. This is only one of two bins I have of mid-century legs. Some of them have been salvaged from other pieces where I've swapped things out. Some of them I find in yard sales or on Marketplace, but I always grab them when I can because situations like this make it a lot cheaper than going out and buying brand new legs. Plus, the main reason I'm doing this is I love reusing things and finding purpose for pieces that would otherwise be discarded. Just popping these nasty things off the end here. I'm going to replace them anyway. There's a bit of an unfortunate situation coming up here. I only film using my iPhone at the moment. Good news, I do have a camera coming, but in the meantime, I have to use my phone. So what happened is that my phone died in the middle of this next series of shots and didn't record. So I will quickly explain what I'm doing here. These legs are going to be two-toned, so the bottom third approximately will be wood and the top I'm going to paint. Unfortunately, that's what it didn't show. It didn't show me staining the wood on the bottom and painting the top, but you'll see the legs shortly and you'll get it. <laughs> I'm now adding replacement glides here on the back. They're a different size than what was originally here, so I had to sort of pre-drill little holes for the two side screws. The middle screw just went back into its original hole, so that was easy. I don't know why they didn't just do this in the first place instead of building that whole crazy thing, but anyway, <laughs> who am I to judge? I'm top coating this with Minwax Polycrylic in satin. I'm using a foam brush to apply. The key here is not overworking it. So you'll see I brush it on quickly and then smooth it out in long strokes all in the same direction. I had to reposition one of these wooden slides here so I'm just putting it back into place. This little ratcheting tool is the absolute best if you've got areas that you can't fit a normal length screwdriver in. I'll pop a link below in the description box if you want to check it out. As some of you guys know, Fusion Mineral Paint doesn't generally need a top coat. It has one built in, but I like to do it once in a while, and usually there's different reasons for that. I'll use a top coat if it's a high traffic piece, something like a dining room table or a chair, where you just want a little bit of extra protection. I'll also use it in instances where I want to deepen the color, which is what I'm doing here. So this beeswax finish, you just brush it on with a wax brush and wipe off any of the excess. So all of this hard work is going to be for nothing if I can't get rid of that cigarette smell. These two products here are the same. There's a spray version and a paint version. I'm going to show you how to use both. If you're going to spray, make sure you wear a respirator and use it either outside or in a well ventilated area because there is a lot of nastiness. You don't want to be breathing that in. This is the brush on version. Don't be alarmed. It goes on white, but it dries completely clear. These back panels often have to be replaced if you've got a piece with cigarette smell. I'm going to try this first, see if I can save myself the hassle of having to replace it. Now if you remembered, we sanded down the drawers completely. Those have to be sealed. The bare wood might look nice, but without protection it can absorb odors like perfume smells, lotions. This is shellac. This does a great job of sealing that wood and protecting it. It's also super easy to apply. So the threaded rods in these legs are going to be way too long for these inserts. So I'm just putting it in here to see roughly how much I need to cut off. I'm gonna wrap the leg up here in some thick shop towel and put it in the vise. And we're gonna use a hacksaw with a metal blade to trim this down. Okay. 
I'm going to do a few pulls with the saw here to get started in between the two grooves and away I go. They're actually quite a bit easier to cut than you might think. <laughs> Big warning here, do not grab the rod as soon as you cut it off. It is crazy hot. <laughs> Just let it cool off. I usually use this time to grab a file and shave off any rough edges. And here's our leg. Let's test it out. I looked at those horrible leg brackets and thought, I cannot leave that like that. <laughs> I never paint the bottom of pieces. There's literally no point. No one ever sees it. It's a waste of product. But in this case, I was worried because the metal brackets stand out a little bit that you might see them from the front. And I didn't want people looking at that awful leftover paint. So I opted to paint the bottom and I thought I was done there, but I stood up and I looked and realized that I didn't paint the underside of these support pieces. Now, typically I don't paint them and most furniture manufacturers don't stain them or finish them either but because the drawers aren't making contact with any of those interior surfaces I opted to paint them just because it's a nice clean look and it's not going to interfere with the drawers. So finally getting these legs on I love how this looks I'm so excited for this piece I'm so happy to have come across it and saved it. It was not headed down a good road, folks. <laughs> it was not looking good for this piece. And through the magic of YouTube, this looks like a very quick flip. This took me two full days to do between dry times and just my schedule. I'm happy to report there is no cigarette smell left. The odor primer did its job and I'm finally ready to put this piece back together, stage it and take some pictures. Thank you.